What up guys, it's Marius from Audio Judgment and today we're gonna talk about transmission lines. Spoiler alert, it's my first transmission line box. And we are going to take a look on how I designed it, how I built it, and we are also going to take a look at the results. And of course you will have my opinion on this type of speaker box. Should you try and build one? Maybe. Probably not. Let me get something up front. I'm not trying to discourage you into making a transmission line project. If you are new to the speaker building scene, maybe consider something else. Or if you insist into building a transmission line, set your expectations low. Unless you are following some tried and tested speaker plans, odds are excellent that you are not going to design something great. But anyway, let's get back to our subject and talk about the speaker boxes in general. Because in my opinion, they have their own design and building difficulty level. Some are easier to design and build, and some are more difficult with a high chance of getting something wrong. And you have your basic stuff, you have your sealed box, you have your base reflex and passive radiator. Without knowing too much, I think anyone can design the just mentioned enclosures. And if we step up the difficulty level, we have our fourth order bandpass and our sixth order bandpass. And lastly, we have the really difficult enclosures to design and build. I haven't uh, designed any of these enclosures except for the transmission line in uh, this uh, project. So uh, we have our 8th order bandpass, we have the aperiodic bichamber, transmission line and horn. Technically a horn is a coupler, you can basically slap a horn to anything, even bass reflex parts. But if you look at a folded horn subwoofer, it looks like a box to me. But uh, let's keep with the introduction and let's go ahead and design a transmission line enclosure. And the first thing we gotta do is to fire up uh, the modeling software. And good luck with that, but because even if you step up to some really fancy software like uh, SoundEasy, you won't find the option to model the response of a transmission line enclosure. However, there are some uh, uh, applications which are specifically designed for a transmission line and horns, and uh, one of which is called Horn Resp. So let's fire that application. And first glance at the interface, a bunch of two, three letter acronyms and some numbers. Just what I wanted. Now I know that this program is pretty powerful, but it looks like it has a very steep learning curve and I don't have the time to start learning this application right now, maybe in the future. So we're not going to design a transmission line using modeling software. Instead, we are going to stick with the basics. So first step, we have to get a woofer. And in my case, I got a Dayton Audio Ultimax 8 inch. Since uh, T lines get pretty big, having a small woofer will help in this regard. The second step is to check the resonant frequency of the driver. And in this case is 31.6 Hertz. Next, we have to find the wavelength of that particular frequency and uh, we have to divide the speed of sound, which is 343 meters per second, to that particular frequency, which is 31.6 Hertz, and that equals to 10.85 meters. Now, the theory is that we need to build a line which is one quarter or three quarters of that wavelength. So, there is no point in doing a line which is three times as long so we are going to stick with the quarter wavelength. In that case, we divide 10.85 meters to four, so one quarter, and we have a 2.71 meter long transmission line. So the line is quite long, but uh, we have the option to fold it. So it doesn't matter how you fold it as long as it has the calculated length. Some like to taper the line because that uh, has some uh, acoustical benefits. So it's exactly like an inverted horn. But since this is my first enclosure, I'm going to stick with a straight line to make it as easy as possible. So a 
2.71 meter long straight line. Problem is that if you fold this line into a normal fashion, it will have a ridiculous width. So I chose to fold it in a different way. So this is how the box uh, should look like. And uh, to give you an idea of how this uh, line works, let me get the, the front panels out of the way. And uh, the idea is that I uh, fold it uh, upwards as well. So uh, the line goes like this. It goes to the back, then up, then to the front, then to the right, then uh, back, down, front, right, back, up, and then it uh, finishes over here. So uh, instead of, of having a, a really wide box, I uh, make it... Uh, uh, twice as small width wise but instead uh, the box will be uh, a bit uh, taller but anyway uh, in this case the box will be more uh, proportionate so to give you a better insight here is uh, how I built the box <laughs> So now that the box is done and we have uh, finished with the measurements, let's uh, interpret the results. 
So this is the near field uh, response of the speaker and it somewhat resembles um, a speaker in a bass reflex box because um, this dip over here corresponds uh, with the resonant frequency of the line. So uh, this is at roughly 37 hertz. And uh, if I show the um, uh, port response, uh, it should correspond with the big peak uh, at that particular frequency, uh, which is correct. But uh, what is uh, specific to the transmission line enclosure is that you will have these uh, modes as we call them. So you have these peaks uh, which uh, repeat themselves and to resolve this problem you will have to use dampening material in different thicknesses uh, in different positions along the line so uh, that is uh, the difficulty in uh, building a transmission line enclosure so if we add up uh, these uh, two responses so let me untick these two we can see that we have a huge dip, a huge cancellation between 100 and 200 hertz. And that is expected in a transmission line enclosure. If you do not have any modeling software and you don't plan to use uh, dampening uh, material, you will have uh, peaks and dips all over the place. So um, uh, if you want to use this, uh, this box specifically as a subwoofer, I guess you can uh, uh, apply a low pass fil filter, a, a very abrupt low pass filter somewhere around this area. So you can exclude all of this uh, response because this peak is uh, very bad, this tip also. And if you are left with only this response over here, I guess that can be considered a, a somewhat decent subwoofer, although this is like a plus five decibels over linear, mm, not the worst, the, the transit response uh, dictated by this steep curve looks pretty bad. I don't know, I guess it could work as a subwoofer if uh, you use a very abrupt uh, low pass filter in uh, this area over here. So as we saw, making a transmission line enclosure isn't as easy as making a quarter wavelength line and call it a day. We have numerous problems with the peaks and dips, so we have to use dampening material in different thicknesses and in different positions along the line. The speaker position along the line is also important. You can offset the speaker and not place it at the beginning of the line. So uh, we have to rely on modeling software like HornResp and uh, uh, model the response before we start building because after we build the box, there is not much we can do. And even if you use the modeling software, you still might run into issues. So there is nothing guaranteed with the transmission line. In the near future, I will probably start learning this uh, HornResp uh, software and give it another go and see how uh, using modeling software will change the result. So that is all for today. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe and see you in the next one. Peace.